what were my favourite makes from 2021 and did I succeed at my Make 9 challenge? Stay tuned to find out. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tyne. Well, welcome to my channel if you're new and just joining me today for the first time. It's lovely to have you here. And thank you to everyone that is a regular subscriber and keeps coming back for more. I really appreciate all of your support. So today's video is going to be a rundown of my favourite makes from 2021. I've picked out a make from every month last year and I'm going to talk through which ones I loved and why. I'm also going to talk a little bit about my Make 9 challenge last year and how I succeeded or did not succeed with that. So let's start off with the Make 9. You may be familiar with this if you are on Instagram, for example, or if you watch other YouTube vloggers, you may have heard of the Make 9 challenge. It is where you set yourself nine makes that you would like to achieve in the upcoming year. So I joined in with this last year for the first time. I think it was the first time? Yeah, I think it was the first time I joined in last year. And out of the nine that I chose, I completed two of those makes in the year. Now, I'm not going to beat myself up about this. I'm not going to say that I failed because the whole point is that it's just a gentle challenge that you set yourself. There's nobody going to beat you with a stick when you don't achieve all nine of the makes. <laughs> However, I just thought I'd talk through sort of which ones I didn't make and why, if there's a reason in particular. So you should be able to see my make nine somewhere on the screen. <laughs> Starting from the top left hand corner, was the Sew Over at Luna pyjamas and this is one that I did make. I made this as a blog post for Felicity Fabrics and I used a Lady McElroy fabric and I was really pleased with them. I will be completely honest and say that I have not worn them very often since then. The main reason is, and this is going to sound quite ridiculous, I don't have a lot of wardrobe space and the fabric I used really needs to then be ironed when you've washed it and probably hung up. So for pyjamas, I don't tend to hang my pyjamas up. I fold them and just put them in the bottom of my wardrobe. And that works great for things that don't crease, but with these, they do crease. And the top needs to be hung up and it's sort of crushed in to the very little wardrobe space that I do have. So I think it's more the fact that they're not being stored correctly and therefore I'm not reaching for them on a regular basis. I think what I need to do is at some point in the near future do some kind of wardrobe edit reduction so that I can see what I've got and actually reach for the things that I want to. <laughs> so yeah, I can't think of any other reason why I don't reach for them, to be honest. They were comfortable, they were particularly useful when I was breastfeeding because they had the wrap over front, which was great access for nursing. Yeah, I just haven't been reaching for them. so. I need to get them out really, try them again and just see if there's a reason why I'm not wearing them, could I do something to change them. So yes, but I did achieve them. Next on that row is the Nova coat by Paper Cut Patterns, previously called the Sapporo coat. I've got the fabric, I've got the pattern, I just haven't got around to making it. I do really still want to make that jacket and what I'm thinking is that I should maybe just start and have it as like a long-term project. It might take me six months and that's fine, but I could just start and maybe achieve something from it every month <laughs> and then I'll have a coat at the end of those six months. Very much still want to make the Sapporo coat and I've got everything there ready to do. The Nova coat, sorry. I've got everything there ready to do it. Next on the grid is the Tilling the Buttons Bobby Pinafore. Very much still want to make this. There's no reason that I haven't got round to it, to be honest, just a lack of time. So we'll still be making that one. Go down to, onto the middle row. On the left hand side is active wear and I did make this. And I was really, really proud of the active wear that I did make. I made it using some active wear fabric that I'd got from Wattle and Slate as part of a strike sew. And oh, I just absolutely love them. I used green style creations patterns for the bottoms so of the tempo tights and the power sports bra, I think it was called. And I love them. Now, I haven't worn them as much as I could. 
haven't worn them that often to be honest and one reason is the leggings I thought I'd nailed the fit I thought the fit was great once I started being active in them it was clear that they were too loose around the waist now since watching Rachel from Stitched Up talk about these leggings quite often she's recommended that you sew clear elastic into the waist in order to get that snug fit and for them to stay put so I didn't do that and I really need to so I'm thinking I could possibly unpick the waistband and add it in maybe and then I'll get more wear out of it the sports bra I have worn a few times and I do really like it but I kind of wanted it to be a matching set so I think the fact that I haven't worn the leggings because they were a bit loose around the waist has prevented me from then wearing the top and the leggings together but yeah I was very proud of making active wear and it has made me want to make more active wear and I will this year so tick for that one next on the grid in the center there is the Calypso hoodie by Sinclair Patterns this was part of the inner haystack pack I love the style of this hoodie to be honest the reason I haven't made it is I completely forgot about it until I revisited my mate nine to make notes for this video I'd completely forgotten about it so definitely still want to make that now I've been reminded of it. The next pattern on the list is the Heyday Dungarees by Waves and Wild previously made by Jack's mum. Again really want to make these, have got fabric to make them. I was watching Elle from Elle and the Stitches recently talking about how much she loves these dungarees and it just reignited that fire. I really need to get them made so I will this year. I'm determined. Next are two projects that are Guthrie and Garney sewing society kits that I purchased and I haven't tackled yet. One is the Persephone pants by Anna Allen and the next is the Kelly Anna Rack by Closet Core Patterns, both of which I really want to make and I will at some point. Again it's a time thing but also I think with the sewing society kits I have a tendency to just put them away and then they're in a box somewhere and I kind of forget about them so I need to maybe have them in a more visible place. Again, like the Nova coat, the Kellyanna rack is going to be one of those I think that I chip away at for a long time. Yeah, I should really just get started on it. There's no reason, again, why I haven't made those other than time. And then the last one was the Bakerloo dress by Nina Lee and I've actually decided to abandon plans for this. I don't know, I just, I'm not feeling it. I sold my pattern, I did have the pattern and I sold it in my D-stash. I just decided it wasn't for me anymore. So there we go. So that was my make nine of which I made two. I still want to make six of them and one of them I've abandoned. I've decided I'm not going to make a make nine for 2022. Clearly it doesn't work for me. I think setting targets to achieve over the course of a whole year just isn't for me. I am going to try this year and work more on a monthly basis and set myself little goals each month because I think that's more achievable and fits more with my style. But if you are doing a Make Nine this year and you have maybe filmed a video about it or done an Instagram post, I'd love to hear about it down below. Please let me know. I'm really interested in seeing other people's Make Nines. Also do let me know how you got on with last year's. I'd love to hear that too. Right, so... I'm now going to talk through my favourite makes from last year and to do this all I did was scroll through my Instagram grid and I picked out the ones that I liked the most from each month. Starting with January and my favourite make that month was the Friday Pattern Company Sage Brush Top. This was my first attempt at the Sage Brush Top, it was a pattern that had really caught the imagination of the sewing community, everyone was making it and I'd kind of not felt it for quite a while and then I just decided right I'm gonna go for it everybody else seems to love it let's give it a try I decided to give it a try in quite a soft fabric so that the poofy sleeves weren't too dramatic because I didn't think that was a look that I wanted to go for I didn't think it would suit me so I chose this beautiful Lady McElroy viscose from Sewers Faction and it was really soft it didn't puff up and it wasn't crisp and it wasn't poofy and voluminous it was just lovely and soft and drapey and yeah beautiful I loved the colours in it I loved that make I felt really good in it and actually Shona from So It's Faction loved it so much that she then made one and we were twins too which was great I haven't worn it that much since because it's gone on to the mending pile. After wearing it a few times I realised it was too short and if you've made the sagebrush top you'll know it's got quite a deep hem 
So my plan is just to unpick it and then just make a narrower hem and just to add a little bit of length to it. And if I make it again in future, it's the only one that I've made, I've never made the sagebrush again, I will make a narrower hem or I'll add some length to it so I can still have the deep hem, but it will have a bit of extra length on the bodice. Right, February, and it's another Friday Pattern Company make, and this time it's the Adrienne blouse. And again, it's the one that I avoided for quite a while because I wasn't sure about those big sleeves but then I just started to see more and more and I fell in love with it so I decided to make my own version and I used a cotton jersey from Sew Me Sunshine. It's this beautiful red and pink cotton jersey and I'd originally bought it to make pyjamas with and then something just struck me, inspiration just came to me and I decided to make the Adrienne blouse and I'm so, so glad that I did. I love this one. I got a lot of wear out of it in the immediate weeks after I've made it. I haven't worn it in recent months and I've been thinking about why and this might sound strange, but I've changed the style of jeans that I've started to wear. So previously I was wearing more skinny, high-waisted skinny jeans. About halfway through the year, I changed to wearing like mom style jeans. They're a bit looser. Still I get them high waisted, but they're a bit of a looser fit. I think I just haven't then reached for my Adrienne blouse to pair with those jeans because I'm not sure whether they'll go. But that's just in my head. Maybe I need to try them on and have a little look for myself because maybe it would go as an outfit. I don't know. I think with just having the loose billowy sleeves, I felt like the looser jeans maybe weren't the right look but I should really give it a try because I do really love that Adrienne and I think it was one of my most liked posts on Instagram last year so other people must have liked it too. Right, March I couldn't choose. I've got two makes in March that I absolutely loved. The first one was my True Bias Marlowe sweater which is a lovely cardigan. I made the cropped version in a black sweatshirting fabric from Guthrie & Garney, but it's got these speckles of pink all over. So I bought these incredible pink buttons from Textile Garden, and I really love this. I wear this cardigan all the time. So this has been a really successful make. I wear it open, and I also wear it buttoned up with nothing underneath, so it's just kind of a top in itself. And yeah, I really, really love this one. So definitely one of my faves. The other favourite make of March was my By Hand London Leo dungarees. I made them in a beautiful viscose from Rainbow Fabrics. These are the most comfortable, incredibly gorgeous <laughs> dungarees. They're just so soft and lovely and I adore them. I love the style of them and I immediately purchased fabric to make like five other pairs and then I didn't get round to it, but I really want to for this year to have some more pairs of those. I haven't been wearing them recently because one of the straps um, came loose, so the stitching came undone and the strap started to come loose. But because of the way they're constructed, I'm gonna have to unpick the whole of the bib in order to access the strap to secure it back down again. And then because the bib's like top stitched round, so, it's on my mending pile and I just haven't got around to mending it, but I really should because I love those dungarees. I love them. I do think I remember wanting to add a little bit of length to the legs. So next time I make them, I'll add an inch or two to the legs as they ride up just a little bit. Um, but otherwise I absolutely adore that pattern. My favourite make from April was the Tilly and the Buttons Lyra shirt dress. And I made this in a gorgeous safari print viscose from First for Fabrics. I really love this dress. I wore it a lot um, through the summer months. I haven't reached for it in autumn and winter. And it's not because I don't know how to style it because I could wear it with tights and boots and I could la layer it with a long sleeve top underneath. The reason I haven't reached for it recently is because it needs to be ironed and I hate ironing so much <laughs> that I'm just avoiding it. It's hung in my wardrobe, squished up and it's all creased and it needs to be ironed before I can wear it. So yeah, I should just do it, shouldn't I? And then I'll have a beautiful dress to wear. <laughs> but I absolutely love that one. I really must make another Lyra. Ruan from the Yorkshire Soul Girl has made a Lyra recently and has reignited my love for that pattern as well. So yes, 
another one hopefully might come this year. Right, I struggled a little bit with my favourite make from May. I don't think I sewed an awful lot in May. I did take part in Me Made May where I tried to upload a photo of me wearing something Me Made every day in May and I did quite well with that. The one that I've picked out is the Helen's Closet March Top which I made in two beautiful fabrics from Lamazi Fabrics as part of a vlog that I did for them. Now I loved this top but I need to find ways to style it. It's not one that I've worn recently and again I think it's to do with I don't know what to wear on the bottom half with it because I've changed to a more loose fit style of jeans and I'm not sure that they would go with the loose flowy billowy style of the March top. I need to find ways to style it because I really do love that top and I love the fabrics it's made in, I love, you know, the colours really suit me, but I need to find ways to style it. Right, my favourite make from June was the Chandler Pants by Untitled Thoughts. I made these as part of a collaboration with the lovely Jess from So What If I Sew. I made them in a fabric from the rag shop and I really, really love these trousers and I need to get them out and wear them again. I kind of thought after I left my teaching job, I didn't then have a need for a smart pair of trousers like that, but I could easily wear those on a day-to-day -day basis. I, I could, I could wear them for work now. I could, yeah, I need to get them back out again and I need to iron them, <laughs> but I absolutely love these trousers. They're great. My favorite make from July was a tried and tested pattern for me, which is the named patterns kilo wrap dress. I love this pattern. I love how it makes me feel. I love the shape. Yeah, I always feel great in a kilo wrap dress. And I made this in an incredible fabric from First for Fabrics. It was just a viscose jersey, black and white stripes, but it had these beautiful green flowers on. And I really felt great in this dress. I wore it a lot through the summer. I haven't worn it in autumn and winter, and I don't think it's one that should be worn in autumn and winter, really, with it being a light fabric and things like that. But I will definitely reach for it again when the weather gets warmer and I adored that dress. My favourite make from August was actually a few makes, one of which is what I'm wearing. So in August I made a few Tabitha t-shirts by Tilly and the Buttons which is a pattern from the Make It Simple book and I hadn't made one before and as soon as I made one I then made about three or four more because they just turned out to be a really great basic t-shirt pattern and you could use a really fun fabric like this galaxy print that I'm wearing now which was from Sewis Faction, like the tie-dye version again that was from Sewis Faction, the floral print one that I made was from First for Fabrics so it really allowed a gorgeous vibrant print to shine because it was just a simple basic t-shirt pattern. This is the first one I made and after making this one I then added a bit of length to each of the subsequent ones that I made. So I think I added like two inches maybe four centimeters something like that. Um, but yeah I'll definitely be making more tab of the tees. They're just a great basic t-shirt pattern. My favorite make from September was again one that I made a couple of versions of and it's the Friday Pattern Company Grace Top. I fell in love with this after seeing Shona from Sewis Faction wearing a version on one of her YouTube videos. I'd never looked at this pattern before but seeing Shona in it she just looked incredible. I then made it in exactly the same fabric as her. <laughs> I don't think I have a photo of me in that one actually but then I made it in a gorgeous pink and purpley blue animal print fabric from First for Fabrics. I loved, loved, loved that top. And then I also made it in a blue camouflage print fabric from First for Fabrics. And again, I loved that one. I really love the Grace top. I love the style of it. I love how it shows off my shoulders, which are one of my favorite parts of my body. I like it tucked into jeans. I will, when I make it again, shorten the pattern because I wear it tucked in and it is quite a long top and it doesn't need to be if you wear it tucked in. So yes, I do love it. I know that they've discontinued the pattern at the moment because they're going to be re-releasing it in their newer, expanded size range. So if you are looking for it, I don't think you'll be able to get it until they re-release it. October, my favourite make in October wasn't actually for me, but it was just the most adorable thing ever for my adorable child. <laughs> Our adorable child. Um, I made him a zip zap coverall by Waves and Wild and oh my goodness, I adored making this. I adore how he looks in it. It's just so cute and it's a really practical make too. I made it using a French terry fabric from First of Fabrics and I lined it with a fleece 
just to make it a cosy onesie that he could wear outdoors. You can also make it unlined just as an indoor onesie but I just absolutely love, love, love this pattern and he looks so gorgeous too. In November I don't think I sewed an awful lot because I was busy sewing up orders for my children's wear business but I did make a Jackson pullover by Helen's Closet and then I went on to make two more in December so I obviously loved it. The one that I made in November was grey, I used a waffle knit jersey fabric from First for Fabrics. It was just a plain grey sweatshirt but I really loved it. I love the fit, I love the style and it's just a great basic to have in your wardrobe so that was my favourite make of November. I then made another version in two colours of heavy sweatshirt in fabric from First of Fabrics and I added a patch onto the front of that one and then I made one in a green leopard print sweatshirting as well. So yeah, love all of those. And then in December I didn't really make anything for myself because I was sewing up things for my business and also gifts for other people. I made lots of snoods, I made infinity scarves and that was pretty much my December. <laughs> so I don't really have a favourite make from December other than I absolutely adore the snood pattern and the infinity scarf pattern that I discovered. They're both by Apple Green Cottage. I'll leave links to them down below and they make an absolutely wonderful gift. And I know quite a few other people on Instagram then made them as gifts for people after seeing the ones I shared. So that's really lovely. And everyone I gave them to gave me really good feedback. So they must have loved them. Right, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. But before I do, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I've learned then from last year. Firstly, I must stop trying to do all the things and stop giving myself so many things to do and stop putting pressure on myself to do them because I work, I'm a mum, I have a husband, a house, I like to go to the gym, I can't then do all of the sewing as well. So I must be kinder to myself and stop trying to do all of the things. <laughs> I also learned that I am more productive when I plan and I use some form of journal. At the start of last year I kept a really lovely bullet journal and I really enjoyed keeping that. I think I might have shown it on here a couple of times and I used that to track my makes and my spending and various other things and I really enjoyed that and then I just let it slip and then I stopped doing it. So the last half of the year I didn't do it at all. I would like to get back into that, so I need to. I've bought myself a couple of basic notebooks from Sainsbury's or Tesco, a supermarket. <laughs> These are just the pucker pad. This is where I've made my notes for today's video. I just bought a couple of those when I was there the other day to get me started, but definitely it helps me to be more productive if I plan out what I'm going to do in some form. So I'm definitely going to try and do that. Another thing that I've learned is a bit about what colours suit me. So I had a really great conversation with a lady in the shop that I work in, in First of Fabrics, a few months ago. And we talked about colours and what colours suit me. And she said that I'm a cool winter in terms of the colour wheel and colour theory or however it's described. So I had a little look at that and looked at the colours that suit me and actually I picked out some of those that I should avoid and I looked at some fabrics in my stash and I held them up against myself in the mirror and realised actually they don't suit me. Yellows and mustards don't suit me. Oranges, rusts don't really suit me. So I had a big D stash. I got rid of all of those fabrics from my stash. Yeah, it has actually started to help me. I'm really thinking more about what colours suit me. If you're interested in that too, Hales from Hales Moore Sewing on YouTube and Instagram has today launched a challenge, a year long hashtag to do with that. So I'll link to Hale's YouTube channel and Instagram down below and you can go and find out more. I need to watch her video where she's done an introduction to it today, but I know she's been talking about what colours suit her and she is actually the same colouring as me. So that's going to be quite useful. <laughs> I'm going to borrow ideas from Hale's. And then the last thing I wanted to mention before I go is that I am going to try a new sewing related hobby this year. I wanted something for those evenings where I don't want to come upstairs and sew at my machine because I'd like to spend some time with my husband and I'd like to just sit on the sofa and watch some TV with him. 
but I'd probably like to do something creative at the same time. So I'm going to try cross stitch. I have been interested in it for a while. My mum used to do cross stitch a lot in the past. And then Ruan from the Yorkshire Soul Girl and Michelle from Sewing Bunny, they talk about cross stitch quite a lot. And it's just something that I've kind of decided that I'll give a go to. So I'm gonna talk about that more, I think in another video but I just wanted to mention it. If you cross stitch or if you've got any suggestions for me on how to get started, do leave your comments down below. I'd love to hear any advice that you've got, any suggestions of UK suppliers for getting the bits and bobs that I need. I went to Hobbycraft the other day and it just all seemed really expensive. So if you've got any ideas on where I could get things at a more affordable price, that would be really useful. Yeah, I'm gonna give cross stitch a go, we'll see. I might love it, I might hate it, but I'm going to give it a try. So I hope you've enjoyed hearing and seeing my roundup of my favourite makes from 2021. Which one of those was your favourite of my makes? I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching today. If you don't already subscribe to my channel, it'd be great if you could. And hit that thumbs up button to show me that you like the video. That's always appreciated. I will see you again in my next video, which will hopefully be very soon. And happy new year to you all. Happy sewing, bye. Hi everyone, my name's Tamlin, this is Sewing on the Tine, and welcome back to my chat. Is that what I usually say? No, let's start again.